C deck, they're stubborn, and only have one D. <laughs> one dimensional. One, one, <laughs> one dimensional, sorry, yeah, I couldn't put that in. Um, <laughs> the secret, they're fragmented. <laughs> And eternal envy. Um, so we're going to go into the bands and picks. I'll let you guys kind of uh, talk us through until we throw it to our lovely commentators when we're all ready. But this is going to be a best of three and uh, a very important Secrets game for everybody. So, you know, every, every if you're a Team Secret fan, if you're a Seed Deck Gaming fan, whoever's playing today, they're only going to be playing today for the group stages. And uh, already we have our first bands out. Yeah, this is really interesting because now CDC have to choose whether they give Secret Chen or Lone Druid or Profit. Obviously, when you're first pick right now, you will get one of the oh, top two heroes. But which one do they consider most important? This is what I was expecting. Team the Chen Ban and AF Profit sounds pretty likely. I don't think CDC's playstyle revolves very well around playing Lone Druid. I just don't think it fits. Yeah, they much rather play. They played a lot of Profit in the past. Yeah, like they did it in the off lane and even one or two games with aggressive playing at safe lane. Yeah, and they've also played it on support. Actually, I think I seem to recall seeing Garter playing it once in the jungle. Yeah. So it's like yeah, a good pick for true. Secret and just a one time. Pick. I think I remember that one game. This is a good opening yeah. for Secret, I think. You guys didn't put in um, uh, Mr. Destroyer in the... Oh, uh, yeah, we forgot about OD. OD? He's yeah. in the bottom half. You think he's in the bottom half? The counter. I'll add him now there. Do you think that's a CDC hero? OD? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds. Um, I think it's an everybody hero. Yeah, but the hero doesn't, like... Face he's like board. a laning face hero. Like, Alright, we got Void and MP yep. so far. Ten Very good. Those were our first two... <laughs> Yeah, first Names two from the list. Forecast. Next Void Zeus. Profit, Zeus is maybe Void. Zeus is a very common pick with oh, the Void. Go ahead, Winter. Sorry. You could take Bench so that they right, don't go ahead. Team Secret can't take it as a <laughs> Yeah, I feel like all the heroes we said were we didn't put any support heroes in, but Venge is probably like the flavor of support hero but this, right now. This is very common when you go into the first game of a tournament, right? You want to come in with something safe. Surely see how you're playing, see how the other team's playing, because you've got the whole. Ten this is one day maybe. group stage. I could see Witch Doctor, by the way. Yeah, Witch Doctor is yeah. uh, one of the better spots against the Treants. He's good with Void. Yeah. Obviously, Bruno with Death Ward. The Cask is good against Prophet. Um, because like the main issue like we've been discussing about Prophet is you, also CDC hero. you need to be able to deal with him in the lane. Otherwise, he yeah. falls out of control. That is like the huge Lena. and biggest advantage of picking the hero. Okay. Team I Secrets think that's mid for Shiki. Pick. Best hero. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's an interesting pick that we haven't really talked about, but the two teams in the world right now I would think are most likely to pick it are CDEC and Virtus Pro. EG, I think, play a lot of Lena. EG, so. too. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I yeah. actually think they have a lower pick rate on it than the, the two teams. This might be the only team, though, that'll first two pick it like this, CDEC. Because of I the, see people doing it. the build as well, like the new build, they go Arcanes and they disassemble it for Aether yeah. Lens. The Aether Lens with the Yules like, is so good, so good. Hero, yeah. yeah, it's really, really good on that hero. It's like having the old Yules again. Well, it's just you, like, even you can initiate with the stun from so much further away, yeah. like from Fog, you can suddenly go in with the stun and it, the cast range is ridiculous for, for Lena. That's a very early Dazzle pick. That's not really a traditional laner against Void. I guess Poison uh, Touch pretty good. is okay. Yeah. Poison Touch is pretty good with Void. You uh, want damage over time to zone yeah. the face of Void. Um, Void does have... Is it something they wanted to pick early as well just because they were scared of it getting banned really? when they're up against, you know, the burst damage of Lina or mm. someone being in a chrono that um, you can I mean, save. that's also a good point, but I think overall when you're opening the draft, like... Uh, you want to go a bit stronger? You, you want to have a uh, good support in the lane that mm. can zone the off lane and you want to have obviously your off, the good off laners right now because most of the off laners are getting picked right away. And it's a good hero versus the Lina because if someone's getting Yule's combo, you can always get brave yeah. off to save yeah. them to make sure they get spells off before they eventually die or perhaps even live. So. How much uh, armor does Void have? Because I just have this memory uh, of... Uh, pretty well, he's an agility hero, so... Four, three to four, maybe? It's level I think one. He has, does he have Five more? Five? 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 It wouldn't be more than five. Because I seem to remember just playing against Dazzle, and it's like, you don't really care about Poison Touch, actually. You he's block a lot of it with your armor, and then yeah, you, just but have, you go to the lane with eight tangos, and that hero actually doesn't really count. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it's still one of the best... If you, if you don't Team zone the Void with Dazzle, it's, back. like, w worse with other supports. Other supports like uh, that doesn't have any damage over time, and you rely on your right clicks, and he gets you mentioned poor man shield, and like you're done, you, you can't really zone him anymore. Yeah. So the damage from, for example, the dazzle hill creeps versus remaining. void is completely like not. He can just he uh, can just time walk time walk time walk it, so it's not even a factor. Okay. It's good if you if he's like half health and trying to farm the wave, you can surprise him and maybe burst yeah. him mm -hmm. before he gets it off. But you only have the surprise. Okay. Wave. And then there's better. Support. The other good support to zone void is your favorite hero because you deal Sounds damage over time. 
He is very, very good. And you harass a lot with your glaives, so it's one of a good example of a support that can totally zone the void out. And He's silence is quite important versus, versus void, I feel, in general, just to stop him getting off his time walk to heal himself up, and it's really annoying as a void to it's try to deal with silence. Yeah, but the thing is, if you use your last word on him first, he can just jump away and you don't do damage. Yeah. So Does yeah. that work though if you have Nature's Prophet Dazzle and then you pick a Silence? Oh, I, I'm not saying this. We're just theory crafting talking, yeah, how theory to crafting deal about a support yeah. that can deal with. In what? theory, Silence is like the best yeah. pick against Void. For the lane, you have the Glaives. For mid game, when Void gets a Chrono off, you just mm -hmm. global. Then you negate what he sets up for his team. Because Void doesn't kill in this meta, right? He sets up the team. He has he goes no damage items. You go like mm -hmm. Vlad's Blink Eggs for your team. Or, BK, or BKB or BKB sometimes. Or BKB yeah. sometimes. But you don't hit hard. I could see that happening later on, actually, that teams start picking the sound. So a bit again. basically, when you have the Void for CDC, you want to have heroes that deal damage yep. in the Chronosphere. Like, He's what? not like a solo pickoff anymore with like Daedalus nah. or Admin. No, not anymore. Not really. You can do it. You can play it safely. Like, it happens occasionally, but it's pretty rare. Like what Parker mentioned before, like Zeus would be one of the very common heroes. And even in the Chinese pubs, like Cinder has been playing a lot of pubs and he met a lot of like Zeus supports. Yeah, there's been some Zeus, Zeus every role, mid, yeah. support, offlane. Yeah, Zeus is a good pairing with Void in the chrono, for the Chronosphere. Just the Witch Doctor ban. Yeah. I think it's smart from uh, yeah. Secret. Just play it safe here. And you make your Prophet pick much stronger because there's yep. not many supports that can deal with the Trians. It's one of the best supports at dealing with the Trians early because of the cask. So what did you think uh, so far, Blitz? What are, what are both C deck Five and Team Secret remain. trying to, you know, focus on or bring to the first game i mean secret opens up really standard like we all thought that the nature's prophet it's not really going to be a ban unless team specific so it's usually going to get through but then uh the only so far interesting thing is the lena but i think for cdec it makes a lot of sense because like you said you need a burst damage pairing uh and faceless void works well against the nature's prophet do you need some way to just set up to stop just one or two heroes mm. so if the nature's prophet goes and split pushes, and Misery, you know, he thinks he's alone, then the Void just blinks in, catches him off, yep. and then you can TP a hero in and set up for it. And then also the Aoife lands on Lina with Yules, yeah. can and blink, potentially, if it's a yeah. mid. I think... I'm trying to think of the possibilities for Seeker right now. What you could do is, you could just say, screw the Void at bottom, we'll just leave him against some sort of safe dual lane, Team and six. then we'll try to give Weeha the biggest advantage possible, which is what they used to do with mm -hmm. Highlight Die. And he'd pick like which every single game, go and harass, try to get annoying. But CDC, I don't know if you can do that anymore because they pick up the Enchantress, and Enchantress Void is super annoying. You're not going to beat that lane with just two. So Enchantress is still jungle, right? Yep. Yeah. We're expecting that. You bring one of the really annoying creeps, like the the Ten hurricane dude remaining. or shock, yeah. the shock wild wing the, the, the wild that wing. just yeah, the stadia, the and the hot ha the, the other really strong one if you can get a yeah. happy so don't, actually... don't forget about the purge yes. you know three yeah. second cooldown so since you've been uh, out of the loop a little bit james there's a couple of Turn things that have happened to, to enchantress that all help she's got a lot more move speed she can re-enchant her creeps so you can keep them going you can use again they get full duration and a lot of the creeps in the jungle have just been buffed yeah uh, okay. since you played the satyr Sa tornado is a lot better enchantress used to go just does she still spawn Yes, she's yeah, you, more. You can ask Parker that. Pretty yeah. sure he's the one that knows the yeah. <laughs> That was so disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> My mom saw that broadcast and thought that was weird. You lived with us for a bit. <laughs> Still invited me to Christmas dinner, so. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Do you think uh, this Tusk pick is good? Mm. I feel like it's almost. It's, it's kind of like what OG do where they pick up two defensive supports, like the Dazzle with the Tusk or the Dazzle with the um, the Winter Wyvern. It's, the Noble and the Grave kind of overlap in what they give it's you. It's also the, the fact that they have a lot of lane pressure. If you look at what they banned previously, Secret banned BHN. Which Doctor BH is obviously good for roaming and disrupting the laning phase, and which Doctor can actually zone the Prophet. And right now, because they the Tusk, it, it seems pretty clear that they want to have really, really strong lanes. They can roam and gank early. Mm -hmm. Prophet can TP in to the mid lane if the Tusk is setting up with Snowball. So they have a lot of pressure for Elena going mid. So because, this changes the lanes a lot. Yeah, because this CDC realized that the mid will come under a lot of pressure yeah. from the Tusk and the Prophet. Maybe that's the reason why they decided it's the Lina is going to be demoted to support and they want a mid hero, <laughs> that's, the, a mid hero that's hard to get. Okay, demoted is probably not. It's, it's also the, the Tusk <laughs> was also... Support players <laughs> <don't know>, like, <laughs> Seconds remaining. Because when you have a hero like Reserve Nature's Prophet in the offlane, you need a less greedy mid, something that's more of a tempo controller, because Prophet takes a lot of farms. So Puck's also something that Secret 
would have wanted to get their hands on themselves. Yep. How are people how are people approaching Puck these days when they play them? Is it feels pretty similar or is like Ag now or like quite a similar relevant? situational? If you're against situational. PKB heroes, okay, it's yeah. great. Um, I mean, but otherwise it's pretty time. much like yeah, the general play style is the same. Oh, I guess no. overall, because you have to play a little bit greedy on oh, that, right? I saw a build yesterday oh, in a pub actually, and I was like, why haven't I thought about this before? This is really good. Blink Veil. The Veil pickup is super good right now. The oh, item has the item has been buffed a lot. In this and a couple of previous patches, it's a lot more trendy now. Don't you think it actually depends works well with his on your team. team's composition Ten as well? Of course, uh, but they all. I think just having Puck and Lena justifies getting that after blink. Because if you look at how Puck remaining. is played, everything after blink. I don't want to call it luxury, but you're very, very flexible with what you yeah. get. Sometimes you get Yule, sometimes you get Lincolns. You can get Ags, like you talked about. BKB Hex. The hero can get like everything. So the veil for the team is actually so very, very even good. more lane dominance from Seeker right now with the OD. Also another way to deal with the Chrono. I think that's a good matchup though. Od versus Puck is pretty. Easy. Od often looks to win the lane. Better for Od and for C Deck, they need to rely on the Enchantress helping the Puck. Other lane is going to be difficult. Well, we mm -hmm. should ask Blitz this. Yeah, you play a lot of mid. He's the mid player here. So I think we... Puck can get aggressive early, but as it starts to get later on, there's like a timing window because Od is just going to build very stat heavy. He'll go a wand, um, shreds drums, yeah. and then he's pretty much unkillable because. Like a 1200 HP hero that has uh, uh, disrupt as well. So you have to kind of get aggressive. And high base armor. Yeah, a lot of this is yeah. going to come down. Seconds, this game almost entirely just revolves so, around the Enchantress. Yeah. If she gets aggressive in the off lane, then they have to do a lot. Eight. They have to shut down the farm as much as they can. So what Secret can actually do is just do some kind of dual off lane and Reserve rotate time. the Tusk and the Nature's Prophet a lot from the safe lane to help out to make it like a three on four fight. What do you think about Dazzle, Dazzle Prophet dual lane and OD safe lane? So OD Team doesn't really need a support. Dazzle Pro I think you go Nature's Prophet safe, go Dazzle plus one hero that can catch up farm mm -hmm. later on, and you're okay with Ben Lina. So basically both teams have very strong lanes right now. It's just that the fact that sometimes I talk about when you have Chronosphere, you want to have range carry so you can hit outside of the Chrono. Yeah, yeah. Sven though, he's, he's been, you know, fire his little bolt. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can hit a creep outside into the chrono and it will oh. hit inside. Oh, and a bristle back. Okay, so uh, we'll get this over quickly because I'm going to go into the games. But uh, what are we looking at? Team Secret versus C Deck. What are they going to try and do? We'll be first to commentate this. Secret goes aggro dueling, like we said before, the last pick, and you safely in the Nature's Prophet. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this comes down to Puppy, and C deck have to rely on the Enchantress to make a lot of space. And because of that Blitz, who wins? I say... Who wins? Right. Well, we're not going to disagree with you, because we only have time to take one, or maybe not, because we're back on camera, one prediction. We can now do predictions before we get into the game with uh, our commentators. Uh, gods? So uh, I'm, I'm going to agree. I think Secret, I, I like what they've done. They dropped the Bristleback's a bit of a kind of out of nowhere last pick for Envy, but I think overall they've got a good Ten game plan. It's a very good Enchantress game. So I think if CDC do it well early, she can Five set up a lot of kills and they remaining. can snowball this game out of control. Yeah. I'm going to pick them. I agree with that. Uh, uh, Cinderin. I think Enchantress might do a lot and they can actually control the early game and that they have Void for team fight. So I'm going to pick CDC. All right, well, let's go into the match. It has started the first game here Prepare for the Shanghai battle. Major presented by Secret World. It's Secret versus C Deck. Enjoy the game. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and indeed, welcome to the first game that we're going to be covering here uh, at the Shanghai Major Group Stages. It is Team Secret going up against CDEC, and it's myself, OD Pixel, being joined by the wonderful Draskal, as always. And we've been discussing the draft ourselves, Andy, and uh, Secret going in on a potentially all-in, pushing, getting those auras up strat here. I feel like the brisk was just a hero who would pick up an item like Vanguard or Crimson to be able to supplement the push, because you already have Dazzle for sustain, you have Furion for the Treants, obviously, to help push. And just having that really tanky frontline hero with Crimson makes it really easy to get those early towers down. And I think if Secret can maintain the map control, get an early tower lead and uh, abuse Furion as much as possible, they, they'd have a decent chance. But CDEC, incredibly strong team, and their early game aggression with the Enchantress is also very high, so we'll see who can control the early game here. 
And one of the matches we were talking about before the game is, of course, this mid one. We're seeing the OD come out, which is is a staple this patch. Puck, of course, has come, made a bit of a comeback this patch as well. We're seeing a few players having a lot of success with the hero. But this matchup, the Puck versus OD lane, as you're saying, because of the changes to OD, this can kind of work out for the Puck here because he's not going to be a, as kind of liable to losing as much intel as before with the Astral. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. This is a matchup I haven't really seen too often since the changes to OD, but on paper, like before, you couldn't actually phase shift Astral Imprisonment reliably. Like you would get hit by it, you would lose int, and then Puck would eventually lose the lane. But now since it's tied to the orb, you should be able to phase shift most of that harass. So we'll see how Shiki can deal with Wii here. The other thing too is, we can also counter argue that it's going to be relatively difficult for uh, the Enchantress to get any ganks in on the OD because Imprisonment now works on creeps. So the lane dynamic is a little bit different than it used to be. Uh, kind of interesting, so we here, he's got the first point in Astral, so he can do this, kind of get the uh, the early CS and, and start this to try standard. and get the lane ahead of, of Shiki, yeah. Uh, obviously Shiki with with the wave clear potential once he gets a few levels in. And this bottom lane, so this off lane boy from XZ coming out, Envy on the Bristleback. Uh, I mean, this lane matchup, I guess the Void shouldn't really be dying here at the moment. They, they obviously are running this jungle at the moment. They've got, uh, sorry, not the jungle, this puppy at the moment is going to be rotating around the map on the tusk. I mean, where do you think puppy's going to put most of his attention? Are they going to try and attempt to, to kill the Void, or do they just have to kind of let Exe get away with that space? And do you think we'll see puppy look elsewhere for a bit of action across the map with Pi? I don't think there's a very high chance of killing either the offlane or the mid, really, if you're a secret. Like, you kind of have to bait out an orb from Shiki if you want to kill him. And I don't think that if he sees a support's missing on secret, <laughs> that he's going to make that mistake. And the other thing is the same for bottom, XE, he just time walks away, and if you don't burst him, which their damage is almost all burst, you're going into a snowball, potentially into a heal, with possibly a teleport from Misery, if that doesn't kill him straight away, he's just not going to die at all. And Bristleback is all incremental damage, you know, you're stacking up the quills, you're hitting him with nasal goo, and you're auto-attacking, like that's not a quick kill, and you need to burst Void to kill him, or kill him very slowly. And the latter means that he's going to be closer to his tower, unfortunately, and that means you're going to have to go for a dive, which they probably don't want to do. And as we're seeing at the moment, Void very happy with this matchup. 5 for 3 against the 4 for 2 here uh, on, uh, sorry, 6 for 2 on Envy and now. So it, it, he's getting the farm. In terms of the build for the Void, do you see any reason why he, he kind of go away from the staple, getting that Vlad's up, going for the blink after? Is there, is there any other kind of item that Xe might think about picking up ahead of these this game? I think that, like, Vlad's is probably the all-around best build, just because this is a hero who plays with a team. You want to be throwing Chronospheres out and having your team back you up. And the item gives you mana regeneration, it allows you to jungle, which is something that is very prevalent in the offlaners that are picked in this patch. If you don't have the viability of jungling, you need either an Iron Talon or Lifesteal. So I feel it's probably still a go-to, but after that, it really just depends on what he feels he needs. And we can see with these pulls as well, Puppy just desperately looking for the level 2 before he can start to really kick things off across the map. We did see him walk around towards the mid with the haste, but hard for him to really achieve too much as a level 1 tusk against that mid lane Puck. And they do of course have that smoking inventory ready to go as well. Looking at the lane at the top, one lane that we haven't really touched upon. Uh, Sven at the moment, 17 for 8. Uh, this Nature's Prophet not really uh, being able to do too much against Aggressive, and, and the farm is going to be good for this Sven. And Sven, it feels like a hero that, that we are seeing teams pick up, and, and there's a few different ways Radiant top tower is under attack. Come out with more safer builds. I think that Blink is actually really strong this game. When you have other heroes on your team who innately build into Blink as well, like Puck for example, and you have good follow-up damage like Lina, granted it's a support in this game, but eventually he will hit like 6 or 7, and then you can go for a uh, very, very high burst. I think having that initiation potential is a good way to catch Seeker off guard and stop them from putting together their 5-man Dota, which with their lineup, they have the potential. You know, either option is, is good, but Blink early I think would be strong. Almost in at the bottom here, Puppy, just forcing XE to time warp back as the three of them on the side of Secret join forces. Now the four. Misery is going to come in as well here with the push for Trance. And they're going to try and do their best to do to take a tier one. And it'll be a bit of a rotation here as, as the Ench is going to be hanging around the Ancients area of the Dire. Happened. Well, tier one's a fall almost certainly unless uh, the side of CDC throw anything more in. But I think it looks like they realize that this one is uh, just a fight they don't really want to trade there. We'll get the who stop off the MV and MV he's front lining this but he's got the back up of the deck. The tower's down and, and I guess that's the plan for secret at the moment. Getting a tier one, four and a half in so that's so good here for the side. That was alright, but I think if the shards actually hit Q there, it would have been a first blood too, which would have been even more momentum. 
why like secrets kind of lineup they need to control the game as long as they can like you need to get those towers continually push keep applying pressure to cdc i kind of favor their their late game they have a, a natural bkb carrier who's extremely strong like sven you get that plus armor too from the war cry that's going to be great against weave during some of those team fights and their aoe like lockdown you have light strike array you have sven stun puff oil void chronosphere their team fight is insane so a secret are definitely going to be feeling the pressure and want to try to end this as, as fast as possible and the mid lane matchup that hasn't really received too much uh, kind of uh, uh, other heroes just coming in and disrupting the lane. This is fairly balanced, still 22 for 7, compared to the 20 for 11. So, fairly even matchup. Shiki just with a slight edge in terms of denies. But I guess at this point, we said earlier the fact that ganking this puck is going to be hard if you're the side of secret. So, they've kind of got to just let it go. And that is going to mean that puck should, at this rate, have a relatively good timing on the blink dagger. I think he is like 600 gold right now, so it's it's not going to be like insane or anything. This lane matchup is uh, pretty dead even though, like you yeah. mentioned. I, I, like, I haven't seen this particular match in a competitive game since the, the changes to ODs. So first time I'm, I'm having a chance to see it play out, but it's actually good for CDEC that the lane's going like this because it means that by the time he gets blink, Secret might not have already taken like all the other two towers. That's the one thing that they want to try to stop is just maintain some semblance of map control and so we can smoke and not have it be like mega obvious like right now. If they're looking for some kind of aggression. They realize Radiant's if we can stun Secret progression, it'll be great for us. Oh, we're looking to look towards top progress. He's trying to finish up the tower. It's going to be TP from Puppy. Oh! one here and CDEC will find a tower themselves here with this bit of action and secret this time bit of a roll reversal they're unable to stop them on the top lane so overall it's one for one it's not a, a huge way uh, either way I think the, the most important thing to keep in mind right now is like the support levels on CDEC because they have a, a leaner right this hero needs level six and then once the void since he's already got his ultimate up they want to get together they can throw out another smoke it gives them the possibility of blowing up a hero before secret really have a chance to react unless we is able to get an imprisonment or you know puppy has a way to uh, to shallow grave which is actually another fair point that we should make about this lineup granted cdec have a ton of aoe lockdown there are still multiple saves on That's secret true. to stop somebody from dying inside of a chronosphere which if you can bait that out and keep somebody alive long enough you might be able to turn tides in your favor but i still do feel like secret's overall objective is just the pressure the moment aggressive with the helm arming up in the jungle with the life still cute if he's able to make any any kind of rotation still mid lane there's a bit of a attention being given by secret we are seeing some heroes just hang out behind we puppies there on the tusk just in case anything goes off waiting for as you were saying earlier if shiki does overextend with the orb but so far been playing pretty reserved here on the puck not looking to jump in too deep against this od of course is the smart play here yeah, i mean he if he throws out an orb basically all he has to do is just sit back and make sure that he's not too far forward because if you orb and then get imprisoned afterwards um you only you still have a few seconds before the orb's going to be off cooldown again and i think it's like seven seconds or so and that's a pretty wide opening especially when you only have level one phase shift but pile i die and puppy going for a, a smoke wrap around here i think this is just a warding expedition i don't think they're actually trying to go for a kill well they're gonna see that the inch has been stacking the ancients here for the side of cdcq's been well on top of that and, and they'll get the warding down there getting the uh, coverage and the control there over the ancients and they'll straight away actually q with that sentry oh uh, it's just out of range so q just unfortunate there with that one that's sad times. It's very nice awareness though because they didn't even really... Extremely close to dying. And just imagine if Garter had been six there. That would have been a Laguna Blade oh, yeah. into Wii. And, and he's close as well, isn't he? On the lean. Yeah, yeah he's, he's very close. A few, a few creeps away from the six. The next time, that's not going to go out. This is actually really good secret. for Secret because the two ultimates are down. Like, True. there's no coil, there's no chronosphere. I think that CDC are going to have a really hard time defending this. No, just sexy. Throwing out the time dilation here onto them. Trying to do what he can to hold them back. And this is, of course, exactly what we talked about straight out of the draft. The, the oh, five man for secret. Um, they're just gonna bail. 
Yeah, aggressive is getting the space. This is one of the issues we're seeing on the network at the moment. He is uh, four k at the moment. Um, a lot higher. Well, he's a he's a fair bit. If for whatever reason there was a Sven there, or Garda was level 6, and that 4-man coil and sphere came out, yeah. that would have just been a total disaster. And that's the one thing that they always need to be keeping watch for, is where is XZ? Like, if he goes in on you, and he lands a sphere like that, everyone from CDEC are ready to fight, that team fight is kind of over for you. I'm really feeling worried for Secret that the, if they just dilly-dally around too much, it's, it's not going to go well for them. Shiki as well. He needs to be careful, he's very close to that blink tag and as we talked already, it's going to be a huge item for him. The amount of the synergy that CDC have got with their lineups in these team fights is pretty incredible. Garda and Q, looking at the rotation with the smoke, Garda has of course just hit the level 6. Got some vision down, sir. So. he bought a Dominator. Alma the Dominator! I wonder if he has a specific creep in mind that he wants to actually... Uh, I guess, yeah, having to push getting a certain aura. I mean, you could disassemble and buy Vlads and buy something else if he wants to use the Helm of Ironwell for... And I guess armor would be like the only thing that would make sense, but... Yeah, this is a little bit different. I haven't seen this before. These could be the strats that Puppy was saving for the Shao <laughs> Major coming I mean, out here through, through Envy. It'll make sense in time. It will. I'm sure it will. Secret have got a plan. And uh, a good, a very, very important game for, well, it's not just Secret, but also CDC. Obviously, CDC, yeah, as the panel was talking about, not a team that we've seen too much about. Secret, we've seen quite a bit, a bit from over the last few months, and it hasn't been the secret of old times. But maybe this is this is the chance for them to kind of show us that, that Secret are back. They've got a fair amount of proving to do. They want to win back over community's respect. And the other thing, too, to keep in mind is that th this is the beginning of what you would call the tournament meta. Yes. So every game, first off, you, you start with what people have been picking. OD has obviously been very popular lately, and each team has their own individual style. But as the games play out, we'll get more specific. What are the Shanghai picks? You know, what are people doing to counter the strategies that all the best teams are going to be running here? So as time goes on, we'll see... Uh, I'm sure some drastically different later on in the group stage and even on farther into the uh, semi-finals and whatnot. So, still not a kill. Uh, 12 minutes in. A little bit of a slow-paced game in regards to actual kills, but there has been a lot of movement. I think this is the third smoke that CDEC have thrown out so far. And they are still looking for... They're some desperate to use that Laguna. And it's, this is going to be the blink reveal from Shiki. Yeah. As this could be a very... To being a they did screen. have that ward around, but I don't know if that would have caught them smoking. I actually think this benefits Secret so much, though. They're in the space for the mid tower. Yeah, but I, they need to be careful. They can't stick around mid for too long. I think they realize it as well. Yeah, they've got they the, have that ward. They know they're aggressive now. now. Yeah. yeah, but it's still spotted out Shiki. Like, if that ward wasn't there, there was potential for Shiki to be able to get blink initiation there, and it might have resulted in a kill. But in that time, Misery is also able to TP top. So that movement that they just made, CDC, another smoke, and still not anything for it. I uh, see so he, he's looking for this kill. He wants to try and get a turn of the misery again. Playing smartly. Keeping himself out of harm's way. Void, 1500 gold, so... He's close to... how many... What, to finishing off the lads, or do you think at this point it's just to save up, get the blink first? Pulling that much money, yeah. I think he would probably just go for the blink. Unless he's talking with his team and asking, do you think we need the Vlads now for the team fight, or does the blink give us the better opportunity for winning the fight? I think that the latter is true. Having the range and the element of surprise as well be a big thing. Now, if they click on the Void when he shows himself under that ward and they see that he has nothing, they might think about him going Blink first, because if I only see Ring of Regen, that he has 63 CS right now. So, obviously, at this stage in the game, he's he's pretty farmed in terms of creeps. Oh, he's just spent the money as well, dude. Yeah. So he is just going to finish finishing it. He's not going to go for Blink. So the consensus, maybe they want to try to go for an earlier Roshan as well, but the thing is, they're almost out of smoke, if not completely out. So if that's Whoa, the case... Nice spread. Spent his money. So I think that rotating that many people, getting the tier 1, 
Now CDEC are going to have a chance to counterplay themselves. They can pressure the alternate tier one of Secret. I mean, obviously giving away the first blood itself isn't great. And Secret are going to smoke up here and potentially look for an engagement. Oh, is Q going to break this? Uh, nice. Secret. They've had a taste for blood here and they want to try and find more <laughs> Do you want to XZ, XZ? He should be fine, he's got another time walk coming straight back up. And Iron Dilation as well, really screwing over Secret as they're unable to follow through with any further spells. But another kill on the board, and it's 2-0 now for Secret. One of the kills that count here, and they're starting to win these skirmishes that... So it seems to be CDEC just getting caught a little out of position. There was so much poise there from CDEC though. Like that initiation, a lot of voids would have just dropped a sphere to try to save Alina. But he's like, nah, it's probably not worth it. The Lina's gonna die anyway. I see the Fury and teleporting in. It's better to just let him die and sit down, so that way Secret don't get something else. Like, maybe they don't go for Roshan after this, or they don't keep pushing. Just giving away the Lina, I think, is uh, definitely the better play, because that's also a huge chunk of your burst damage. Obviously, Aggressive was dead. And then if your Lina's also dead, there's no Laguna, because he threw it out on the Bristleback, and then there's no follow-up. I think it was actually a really good choice. And now, with this smoke, this could be go time for CGC. It could be their turn to get the kill on the yeah. board. They've got the Dream Coil, they've got the Chronosphere, and Garda will have the Laguna back they in about 10 vision, seconds though. here. Misery standing there in the front of this one. There'll be the Blink 4 from Shiki. Blink 4 with the time of Flexi. They're holding onto their ults here, waiting for the right time. They get the time dilation onto Misery. And Misery, he'll go for the TP out, but Lina's there with the large strike. They will take down the Fury and the BM Laguna Blade to finish it off. Garda desperate to use his ultimate. And uh, that was aggressive. Uh, he's going to try for the TP out because it's noble there. Secret, they're ready for the counter. Back and aggressive once again, getting corn out fairly deep on Secret's territory there. It's a trade one for one, but obviously aggressive is worth a little bit more. I, I'm really actually impressed with the way that Secret have been playing this because first off, Misery runs towards the enemy tower, realizing that there's two big AOE ultis off cooldown. If I run into my team, it's probably going to result in multiple heroes dying instead of just me. So I'm just going to attack. Oh, MV. MV. Oh, oh, the neutral killed him. Oh. Radiance middle tower is under attack. <laughs> Losing the Ancients probably makes it still bad. But uh, overall, I think that Secret have been playing it very nice so far. Oh, I... Another two on top of that high being dead. They know that without Bristle, there's pretty low chance for any contention on that tower. Yeah. So and, I get, okay. and, and, get, and in a game where we're 17 minutes in, there's only been five kills. <laughs> You're kind of like, that's not it. You can tell that both teams are just trying to like feel each other out a little bit. It's a very, very tension, uh, tension heavy game because both teams realize that, you know, you win one or two games in the group stage, you get rolling, you get that morale, you know, you can just kind of steam roll, scare yourself a top spot. But this game, starting to see a little bit of a, uh, little bit of action. And in the meantime, this guy, uh, aggressive, is we're gonna see a smoke from as well. There's just been, everyone's fighting. Aggressive's farming. Like that's that's his role he right now. He is keeping up there. Uh, uh, we on his OD is, is really catching up though. He's less than one k behind. Oh, 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 they're gonna go for it, but oh, here comes the creep. Oh, he's stuck. <laughs> Yeah, they've got a good lineup for this one. XD is dead, but does not have Chrono Spear, and it's going to be down. OG's going to be able to pick himself up the Aegis, and now with the Snook! So, and the Aegis onto OG. Now with the mech on Puppy as well, like he's going to be guarding Grease about 1250 gold. This is the kind of momentum that Secret are looking for. Don't know if Aggressive is ready to fight just yet. The one thing about Sen that's, that puzzled me when I saw it picked is how he synergizes with Void. Because I mean, he's he's a... this has been happening a lot. I think a lot of the CIS teams are doing this as well. They go for yeah. this Void Sven, which seems quite an awkward combination, but a lot of teams are liking it. I think it's main... Oh, oh <laughs> misery. He's managed to run away from two of these so far. I don't think he's going to run away from this third one. The stone lock is there. The silence as well. Misery getting burst down from the two of them. Yeah. Shiki will take the kill. Weeha, maybe see if you can find anything on the uh, 
on the counter here. Aggressive, he's duking it out into the jungle. He has got the favorable movement speed, so he should be able to get himself away. Pilot dies so closing fast. in as well. The tree? The tree nearly blocks him out. We'll kind of force him go to go to the north. We are desperately trying to look at the Ash Girls. They'll be snowball onto Shiki here, but Shiki has got the ult to get himself out. We are still desperately chasing this van. Prince has kind of body blocked him up a little bit at the end, and it looks like they won't find uh, the fuck either. Now, Q, he's got the heal here. Bench. Pretty good hero this patch. Is he good enough? There's three heroes trying to take him down. Q on the run. Puppy. Fire out at the same time. Actually. He's been caught. Middle tower is under Radiance Courier has been killed. And that... Oh, 265 gold. Oh, okay. Wasn't too much. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, it was, it was I was looking at the screen. Yeah. We've got this preview screen. It cuts it off. I was assuming it's 2650, but... Yeah, I think they'll cut it. But another kill here for the side of Secret. They do get... The, and the fact that Envy lives there as well. I mean, a chrono yeah. was dropped on him. We're starting to see the power of the Bristleback, where four heroes... I mean, three heroes took their time to kill the Inch, but they did manage to kill him. Four heroes were thrown at Envy. Couldn't kill him. That's just it. I mean, their lineup... It does really good sustain damage if the Sven can hit you for long periods of time. But the problem is, running down a Bristleback at Sven is not really ideal. You, you know, you don't want to chase this hero. And putting, like, all your abilities onto a Bristleback, just being that guy who absorbs damage for your team, that's kind of what Secret wants, which is why I figured he might go for, like, a Vanguard or something, or Crimson, just to make his front line that much stronger. But even these items, like, he gets armor from it, he gets the health and the movement speed from the drums, a little bit of mana. I mean, drums and, and your war path stacking up, you're, you're going to be racing around that. Yeah. And, and I think that was the issue there, they just didn't have enough control, which is it, funny enough, you look at the heroes that they've got. Oh, uh, Gildic Shiki indeed getting caught out of here, and he's gone. We are few snaps with the orb, and uh, that orchid is done. I believe they're also going for the orchid here on the nature, but yeah, they've got the yeah. double orchid up. So but this already is going to be pretty huge against uh, what the side of CDC are going to try and throw into the team fights. It's so hard to play against oh, double, double orchids. as well. There's Triple drums. Right, everyone get a pair of drums. Let's yeah, do it. Drums a good item. It is, it's uh not not too bad for you not too bad for the bang for the buck. Yeah, yeah but the the way that EDC are playing us, they seemed a little bit more coordinated in the first, I would say, ten to fifteen minutes with their movements and now it just seems like they're kinda getting picked off everywhere. And Secret are just having the better team fights, obviously, because they, they get Roshan. That smoke to Rosh when they realized that CDC were out of smokes at that point, and also seeing that two ultimates were dropped for a tier 1 power, and they knew they had a little bit of time left to be able to secure that particular Roshan, put them in such a great spot. Because now they can't go for Weak. Even if they could, he would just respawn. And that fight's kind of like an automatic loss, so I feel like that Roshan attempt uh, that they just did and were able to get away with put them in such a fantastic position that now CDC have lost all sense of control of the map. And this is exactly where Secret want to be. Now explain this to me. Okay. Defusal Blade Void. Uh, get rid of the silences. Yeah. He needs to, he needs he needs to, save, to save himself from the team, yeah, yeah. Against this double orchid. You can go like, um, you can go Manta as well. It's actually not that bad. Because, like, say for a hero like Bristleback, for example, he has, like, an insane amount of HP, but if you mana burn him, and he's not able to spam Quills and Goo, he's not, he's just, like, a creep, right? That's true. He doesn't really do that much, but I think most of it is just for the Orchid. Well, I'm at the moment, Secret can look for the second tier 2 of the game at this point. Got it. And it was looking for a bit of pushing. Now, gonna TP back. Actually, jumping in on top of Chrono. Let's pop in Weehaw. Weehaw Chrono, very vulnerable position here. CDC kind of bring him down in the world, though. They'll take him now. He's still got the Aegis. Dream Cop up onto the aggressive Chrono with a cool damage. Well, that's. of them will survive envy as well gets the tp off which is good as well because he is stockpiling a lot of gold that bristle 3.4k in the bank at the moment but a nice reaction there from the side of cdc and they managed to keep the tier two alive as well on the bottom lane uh, that was just an overextension by Wii. He was in such a bad position because I don't know if he realized that Shiki had Yules or not because he popped the Orchid on him and he Yules himself right away and that's when the Void decided to jump in. At that point, like, obviously XC didn't go for blank, so he had to time walk like two or three times to get into a decent position. But as soon as that ultimate comes out, even with Highlight Dai being outside of the sphere, he was just way too far in, like, behind the tier 2 tower. And that positioning kind of hurt Secret really bad in the long run, so... A nice fight from CDC. A little breath of life here. Aggressive. 
farming like a madman. He's, he's really breaking away. I think there's an earlier point about what uh, 10 minutes ago I want to say that there's just a 1k difference between himself and the OD now. He's really stepping it up aggressive. But, and this is potentially where the game can begin to get incredibly scary for Secret. If this thing gets out of control, it's... I mean, Secret, they're going to need to throw everything at him. And it is he's kind of overextension they need to be careful about. And aggressive actually does TP away. He has time. a ward, so he saw the OD. He knows that he's going to get ganked. But I... One for those teams that CDEC have, where even if you're really far behind, if you land one good ultimate, like one good sphere, one good coil, team fight right there. You know, you, you just walk away with it because of your team composition. But Secret can get far enough ahead to where that's going to be more difficult CDEC to do. But when you take those team fights with Aegis, you're not able to get to tier 2. They walk away with a handful of kills. All back in Secret. And the moment, Shiki. Himself, 1800 gold. He's starting to save us with us. 1300 amounted on this void. So potentially after defusal, he will go back for a blink himself here. And uh, that's your S and Y done now in the bristles. So again, just adding to the tank, adding to the movement speed, and and now he's going to be able to have a little bit of a right click to him as well. This back is something that you just don't want to hit in a team fight. Like more or less, when you have bristle on the enemy team, as long as you can ignore it, you want to try. Because if you keep committing resources, he starts like turning his back, running around in circles. All the damage that you deal is just going to be gated, more or less. But it's like uh, Secret are doing a better job right now of at least splitting up and just scouring the map for golden experience. I think CDC has spent the last couple of minutes just dewarding, making sure that the vision on Secret, at least in terms of their side of the map, is fairly limited, as they only have one ward out right now. That should set up uh, CDC for at least a decent smoke. But I think it's pretty hard for. A full-on team fight with this little vision right now. And we're seeing, of course, a lot of use of, of this little man here following around to spend the stuff to uh, set our banish that we saw. In fact, uh, Envy was bringing one of those around with him earlier there with his own now. It definitely seems to be the creep of the patch to have with you to get that uh, pretty ridiculous uh, cooldown spell there. Five seconds every three. Get a few of those off with the mana pool that this creep rocks, and here we go. Smoke up from CDC. They've got all the ults available. Oh, there's a double damage too. A little bit unfortunate. This seems to be Roshan's nearly alive here. Bit of potentially being a, an objective for CDC to go for. They do want to try and find the kills, but Secret they're going to very top, safe. I think. They need to cut top because they have a ward, right? So they scouted out that Envy was yeah. up there, and they they know that Misery might be in the area. Is I think it's the best chance for them to find something. They did uh, get a ward down in the jungle too, so even if the smoke doesn't necessarily get a kill, it's going to be used for vision, and then Secret are going to have to try to find out where a CDC actually placed those, which can be difficult. That's pings on we, they might want to jump this, they might want to just dive into tier 2 and they just keep going in, get the sun! about it at the beginning of the game. They have one hero blink in, he coils, he gets the silence, and then they go for the OD after the sphere comes out from XP to make sure that there can be no grade. So the execution of that team fight from CDC was flawless. Like they just blew everything into Wii. They didn't have buyback on either of their cores. Like Envy and Wii both couldn't buy out. I think it's just wreck. Uh, this was a, a major blow here for Secret that last minute of gameplay and I see if they can to stop it, probably trying to come out. Take a still arm to the face, but CDC uh, able to get all the space that they need for those melee racks and they're unable to do anything to try and catch them out on the way out. Very clean fight and clean objective taken there by CDC. And this is perfect timing too because Roshan's also alive, which means that Secret pretty much have to do something now. They're going to see them walking up. towards the pit and they're going to feel like if we don't try to go for a D ward and a smoke like right now to stop them from doing this, we are in a horrible spot. Yeah, here we go, straight away. They know that they need to try and find yeah. something at this point. Misery will be spotted out by that ward, but the smoke was done away from any sort of vision from the side of CDC. They'll go straight for the pit. They've already sent the car so they know the CDC is still outside, and they're going to check in their own jungle. Exe and QR here, but these are two hard targets to lock down and find, and Exe straight away with the TP out. He's going to be able to make it here. He's fine. He's out back to base, and Q as well. Did he get a range off? Did he get stuck in animation because of Untouchable? 
Either way, maybe a plus 17, but they're gonna try and go for Rochan off back to sending those two hind bars. The CDC, they're, they're gonna be more than happy to fight now. They've got all their... Like, you have to worry about Coil, Spend Stun, Light Strike Array, Chronosphere, like all these spells and close proximity makes it almost impossible to focus down one hero. So this is basically the way the team fight plays out. Uh, aggressive blinks in, he wants to go on one of the supports to be able to like force on the grave themselves so it opens up a kill for a core, right? You want to be able to go on them without a shallow grave or without an imprisonment. So he wants to find a support, but Puppy snowballs right away, and then they try to turn and kill Aggressive, so there's three people tunnel visioning him at the same time. That opens up a sphere for XC. As soon as that sphere comes out, all the momentum in the team fight from Secret is lost. And then they get time dilated on three heroes, which means that no oh one boy. else is going to be able to use a spell. Like, it's ridiculously hard to fight 5v5, even with getting that Roshan. It just, it was not enough. And now, of course, with the Scepter done on this Void XZ, when you're ready and waiting with the Chronos even more frequently in Misery, just having to get himself back there is cute. Hitting him to him with the impetus, and we can see as well this Enchantress, less than 1k gold away from having the Aghanims on top of the Dragon Lance. Talked about this at the beginning of the game. Secret obviously coming into this one with a game plan, running that core bristle back. The question is, Andy, how do they kind of play back into the game at this point after the, coming out of the back of two incredibly bad fights for them? We're seeing on the net worth difference at the moment. It's over 14,000 advantage here for CDC. And the money is certainly on the heroes that matter. Sven, aggressive at the top, 303 CS. And he's been finding a lot of favorable fights as well. We've seen him being involved in well, 11 of the 15 kills. Uh, considering the fact that he's got nearly double the CS of the highest farm on Secret, it's incredibly impressive. Betty. It is. It is actually insane. I mean, he's been spending most of the game alone as well. Like, only the last couple of team fights is when he's really been present. The Roshan fight, and then obviously when they were jumping on mid, were the two most prevalent fights in my mind. But, as it stands right now, the Secret, they need like a, necessarily a miracle, but they need a really strong hold. They need CDEC to either overextend, they don't have an Aegis obviously because they killed Roshan themselves, so they don't have to worry about killing anybody two times, which is I guess nice for them, but they're already down uh, a middle set of melee racks, and in this position, it just means that CDEC can do whatever they want, you know, they can control the map, because of the fact that Cheeky now has, I think it's level 4 Dagon? Yeah, he just upgraded it again. <laughs> so, that, like, this build... I saw the recipe for level 5. When you see this build, it looks like a puzzle build, but the reality is, you need the Dagon to be able to burst supports. Winning them the team fights. So Shiki being able to get in the support space, drop a waning rift, you know, throw an orb, dag in him, make him use all of his cooldowns on himself, because again, opening up kills on uh, on core is really important. And he has been caught out here, the Laguna actually moving to the front here. The Empress is coming in from behind the stable will come out this is the map. So they can just go for more here. On to tier three, and at this point, game one of this best of three series, looking to go very well for CDC and kind of fulfill the secrets. They've got to try something different next game against this team. I don't think their strategy was necessarily bad, and in fact I would say for like the first 10 to 15 minutes, it felt like Secret's game to me. I think the biggest problem that they had was after they got that Roshan, they didn't do anything with it. That was one of the biggest issues, is as soon as they go for that tier 2 dive, the OD dies, we base the team into a fight that they pretty much just get wrecked in. And then after that, the one blink initiation when they were inside of the base, and that smoke that CDEC did. This is the final stand for the real. Isn't there for secret? Do you feel this was just CDC playing better or do you feel that this was secret making mistakes? 
Well, their lineup is more prone to... They have to execute flawlessly almost with their lineup. So if, if you want to say...